past two episodes we have gained knowledge about what is snowpark and what it is not and if you are involved in a data project utilizing snowflake cloud data warehouse it is highly probable that you will come across snowpark at some point in time you may come from variety of backgrounds and be working in different roles such as sql developer data engineers data ops administrator python developer data analyst data lead architect data manager data scientist cloud data developer or etl tool developer regardless of your role if you want to advance in data world using snowflake as your primary technology you will need to become familiar with snowpark learning snowpark is a must for many of these roles and for others understanding snowpark is essential to excel in the data world using snowflake as your technology so if you are interested in growing your skill and knowledge in data world then snowpark is a must have in your toolkit in this tutorial we will dive deep and answer who should learn snowpark Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this everything about Snowpark playlist for true data professionals and data engineers like you. And in this episode, episode 3, we will try to find an answer if you have to learn Snowpark and if yes, should it be at elementary level or intermediate level or expert level. So let's start. We have already finished two episodes in this playlist. We are going to discuss many different topics related to Snowpark. You can pause the video, review the topic and jump to this specific episode if that interests you. Link for all the videos can be found in the description section or above in the info card. Before we proceed, I have a quick announcement. I have published more than 100 videos covering different topics under different playlists. And if you find it hard to get into a specific topic or a subtopic, or a concept, refer this summary card or a cheat sheet. Check the description section below for download instruction. For additional queries or a specific question, feel free to drop a note to my Instagram account. So let's start. Before we discuss who should learn Snowpark, let's understand the challenges with widely used technology called SQL. Let's say we have an employee entry exit table where every in time and out time are recorded for an employee. If we have to calculate the total time spent by an employee or all employees inside the office, we simply write a SQL. And if we take this sample data set where we will extract the date part from the timestamp field called in time, apply a group by on employee ID as well as on extracted date, calculate the difference between in time and out time field and apply the sum to know the total time. And this is how the SQL looks like. There is a group by clause on employee ID and attendance date. And on line number four, we applied the timestamp diff and sum the individual records to get the total time spent by an employee on a particular date. We call it attendance date. But wait for a second. If I extend the same example and if an employee exit time is not on the same day as per the employee in time field, then the SQL calculation will go good. However, attendance date calculation will not comply as per the HR business rule. If you look into employee ID 1, the second record in time is 18th April 2022, but the out time for that entry is 19th April as employee worked beyond midnight. And as per the HR attendance rule, if employees in time and out time is not in the same day, the calculation has to split past midnight hours should be counted for the next day and in this case the 30 minutes should fall under 19th April rather than falling under 18th April. So to solve this issue we can assume that a virtual record should be created to ensure that the same SQL function work as per the HR calculation. And this is how one extra virtual row looks like. So the first transformation has to be applied to split the record into two records and then we have to run our SQL statement to calculate the total hour spent by an employee on that attendance day. Such requirement can be achieved using SQL, but it will make the SQL bit more complex. And what if there is another case where employee has out time but does not have a paired in time and HR attendance has a different rule for such use case. If you have to accommodate all such cases, using SQL statement, it becomes really complex and may not be easy to handle. However, such complex transformation can be achieved 
using programming language in much more manageable way. This is a very simple example. There are many such cases where your query has gone for hundreds of lines and it becomes nightmare when it comes to debugging those SQL statements. We can talk about another scenario, specifically when it comes to process complex JSON, which is one of the common use cases nowadays. SQL may not be your preferred way to deal with complex JSON. You also find many case statement and lengthy control flow, which makes your overall SQL very cryptic and unmanageable. Let's discuss challenges with SQL as declarative scripting language. SQL is 50 year old technology developed by a group of researchers led by Donald and Raymond in 1917 in IBM. The original name for the language they developed was SQL, a structured English query language, but it was later changed to SQL to avoid trademark conflicts. SQL was developed as a language to query and manipulate data in the new relational database management system. SQL is still widely used because of its simplicity, versatility and standardization. We all know SQL is called a declarative language because it allows user to declare what they want to accomplish rather than how to accomplish it. With SQL, users declare their queries using commands like select from where and group by. These commands tell the database what data to retrieve, how to filter it and how to group and aggregate it. The database then determine the most efficient way to execute the query. These commands are pretty standard and classified as data definition language, data manipulation language, data control language, transaction control language and data query language. Anybody who knows this standard SQL syntax can master this technology. But if you have to level up your impact while working with Snowflake project, which is the future technology and become more and more efficient data developer. It is good to learn Snowpark. We understood in our episode one, it is not a very complex technology. And if you give two to three weeks of dedicated effort, you can easily learn and master this technology. And once you start using it, you can certainly reach to a new level in terms of knowledge, impact and growth in your organization. With Snowpark, which allows Python, Java and Scala developers to participate in a data project, many programmer will easily shift to Snowflake data platform. And that brings a risk to a plain SQL developer and ETL developer. Even a one year or two year Python developer or a Java developer can have meaningful impact in any Snowflake project. Snowpark API is not that complex and any Python developer or a Java developer can quickly learn that API because they come from that programming background. Since Snowpark allows these programming languages to interact with Snowflake, a lot of project having complex transformation requirement can now be executed within budget by having mix and match or a hybrid architecture where half of the logic is in a plain Python or a Java and half of the logic is written in Snowpark data frame API. Snowpark brings great possibilities for data science teams as well as machine learning engineers where their existing program can easily be integrated with Snowflake without much effort. So possibilities are endless and if you miss it now, probably it may hamper your growth in future. So let's quickly see if you have to learn Snowpark or not based on your current role and if yes, what should be your proficiency level with respect to Snowpark learning. Should it be beginner level proficiency or intermediate level or advanced level or and you have to have a mastery with Snowpark APIs. Let's try to map the different proficiency level and the role association. As a beginner level, you must know how to establish a connection to Snowflake using Snowpark APIs and having basic working knowledge with Snowpark data frame APIs like select, filter, join, union, rename column, etc including how to read data from a table or a file within stage location with at least a CSV or a Parquet file format, which are pretty common in data world. Also, you must have a good understanding of a data type API to define schemas for CSV file. So if you are a SQL developer or a data analyst or a business analyst or a data ops administrator, this proficiency is good enough for you because this needs a very bare minimum programming knowledge using Snowpark API. Next, the intermediate level resource must know all the reader API that includes JSON, XML, Evro, ORC file formats, writer API that can use save mode to save the data, file operation APIs to load and unload data, all the operations within the data frame like 
group by window functions, advanced analytical functions like rollup, etc., on the top of your beginner level proficiency. And if you are a data engineer, data developer, machine learning engineer, cloud data developer, Python developer, this proficiency level is must for you. At advanced level proficiency, you must have a good knowledge around exception handling and observability API, async job API, stored procedure API, and working knowledge with Snowflake sandbox and deployment of Snowpark program within Snowflake cloud environment. And these skills are expected from data lead, data architect, and data engineering manager who are managing production grade Snowflake Snowpark systems. And finally, if you want to have a mastery level proficiency, the expectation looks like this. A proficient knowledge of building machine learning use cases using Python ML libraries supported by Anaconda packages, SDLC and CICD implementation with Snowpark using Python or Java or Scala APIs and having a strong understanding of operational efficiencies with Snowpark optimized virtual warehouses. And these skills are expected from roles like principal solution architect and machine learning architect. Now we know what are the different proficiency level and what should we learn under each of the proficiency level as per your current role. So the next question in your mind, where to learn from and also how to learn fast using appropriate examples and use cases to become more proficient. And that's what we are going to discuss in our next chapter. I assume this chapter, chapter 3, has given a fairly good overview around proficiency level in the context of Snowpark technology and with respect to your current role as well as your future role. Thanks for watching this episode, episode 3. If you have learned something valuable from this episode, don't forget to press the like button and share with other data engineers and Snowflake developers. Happy learning and keep growing.